Joining me now is Toronto Star City Hall reporter Robin Doolittle. You have written this uh, new book, Crazy Town, the Rob Ford story, which is out today. Uh, and it's an interesting read. It's an intriguing read. You are one of three people who saw this crack video. Uh, let's start from the very beginning. Why the book? Yeah, well, I mean, I think that there are uh, so many important stories around the mayor and his family and his rise and why he's mayor that mm -hmm. uh, while the star has been doing a, an amazing job reporting on the news of this um, to really give the full picture you need a longer narrative and that's really what I was trying to do with the book well, um, when I set out I, I thought there was two things I really wanted to answer one how is it that Toronto which you always think of as this sort of left-wing Hippy dippy, environmentally left leaning area um, elected this guy who seems better suited to American Republican politics. And two, why is Rob Ford the way that he is? I mean, that's what I really set out to do in the book. Now, you really delve into his family history, um, uh, substance abuse within his family, and also, like you said, they sort of consider themselves the Canadian Kennedys. Uh, let's talk a little bit about his family, and because this could also explain you know, perhaps why he is the way he is right. because of his surroundings. Yeah, and that was one thing um, when I started doing the research for this, answering that who is Rob Ford, um, it, it was impossible to tell, to, to answer that question without getting into his family. And I did a, a lot of soul searching and um, I, I grappled with that a lot because mm -hmm. on the other hand, these are not elected officials. They didn't ask to be in the spotlight. So everything that's in the book, I, I feel, is, is directly connected to, to the mayor and, and kind of the person that he has become. There's an excerpt in the book uh, of a recording of his wife, Renata, who's been uh, fairly silent within the media, except for that one time when he brought her out, actually this footage right here, when he made, uh, I guess, a lewd comment in front of media and, and sort of pulled her through the crowd. A recording of her, uh, and if you could just explain for those who uh, have maybe heard about the excerpt about this recording. Yeah, so during my reporting on this, I came across um, an individual who is a former drug addict, an acquaintance of the mayor's wife, mm -hmm. and after he was elected, she had this conversation with him where she's saying things like, you know, we're in the public eye now and he's going to ruin his whole life. He needs, to, he needs to give up the drugs. We have little kids. And... They, she discusses this conversation that they had and the mayor supposedly said to her, um, you know, I still want to party. I, I'll give up the pills, but I'm not going to give up the blow. Blow I took to mean cocaine. Mm -hmm. The reason this is so important is that if you can imagine he's won, he's now the mayor, and they had this conversation at home about drug use and that this is going to ruin your whole life. Um, the foreshadowing that, that's happening, and he did this anyway, and, and that sort of brazenness is something that we're still seeing as recently as this weekend out in Vancouver. The whole world is watching him. Every little move. And he's, he's there taking pictures with people and being on the dance floor, and he says he's having Diet Coke. I mean, regard, there are questions. It's not good optics if you take him at his word, and, and certainly we've, we've seen time and time again that Rob Ford's word is not something necessarily to be trusted. Uh, Robin, you and your team uh, reached out to hundreds of people for uh, research in this book. Um, and what's interesting is, you know, we, we talk about this crack video, but there were several attempts and you struggled within your team and for you yourself about the potential purchase of the video. Were people going to believe you? And then a day somewhat of vindication when our police chief said, yes, this video does exist. Tell me about that battle, that struggle for you. Right. So the the crack video story, that's um, I, along with um, my colleague Kevin Donovan, who's the investigative editor at The Star, uh, worked on this story along with, with others at The Star, as you mentioned. And it was, yeah, a month-long negotiation period of trying to figure out what's the right thing. Is the right thing uh, we especially once we knew that the video was real and we were confident that it was the mayor and we were confident he was smoking out of what looked like a crack pipe and we were confident he was very impaired they wanted a hundred thousand dollars for it these drug dealers do you pay those people that much money knowing that they call they're calling themselves drug dealers on the other hand if you don't pay that money then the city is being run by a mayor who is at least once smoking crack it looks like and we grappled with that a lot, and that kind of internal debate is documented in the book. Uh, the mayor, uh, of course, running for re-election. Let me ask you this. Do you think he will win? 
I think it's possible he he can win. I think if he continues to have distractions like he did on the weekend, that's going to hurt him. But there's this is a long campaign, and uh, I mean Olivia Chow is is a, is a name that's kind of come out as as his ma major rival, even though she is not declared. And I do wonder if that's too far of a swing left, or maybe just what. The city needs you have other you have other names kind of floating around but until the race really firms up um, I think that there are these broader issues in the city these broader divisions kind of brought about by amalgamation that I get into in the book um, that is setting up the possibility of a Ford re-election so where do things stand now with you and the Fords have they <laughs> reached out to you and now with this book on shelves have they said anything well I mean I reached out to them for months while I was writing it mm -hmm. and extended numerous um, interview requests. I actually told Doug Ford, um, who is the de facto family spokesperson, if he would agree to speak with me, I would run an unedited transcript of our conversation as an entire chapter, mm -hmm. um, and he declined. Um, I, I don't know, you know, I, I believe in... Um, I believe it's an important story to tell because mm -hmm. there are really big consequences. There's a city at stake. There's a, a future of a city at stake here. And um, and I, I'm happy with, with the finished product. And I, and I hope it at the very least you know, kind of fills out some of the gaps in this story. It does. It was a detailed timeline just from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. um, and lastly for you, you are doing the rounds in the U.S. as well. Uh, I saw you on CNN when things first broke. And you are going to be on The Daily Show on Thursday. This is quite That's overwhelming. What's this going to be like? Uh, well, I mean, I hope I can go down there and, and also kind of um, explain to everybody how awesome Toronto is. Like, I, I've always, this is the best city in the world as far as I'm concerned, and I'm excited to kind of go down and, and represent that while also kind of giving some of the, the fuller picture about our mayor, this, this guy that a lot of people know mm -hmm. but don't necessarily know the full story. And, and he might be funny, but there are serious consequences to some of these actions. Absolutely. Well, looking forward to reading a bit more. And again, you can get this on bookshelves now. So you're going to actually be at uh, Ramsey Talks, a series at 7 o'clock that's yeah. happening tonight at Bloor Hot Dog Cinema, a live Q&A about this book, Crazy Town. Again, it is on bookstores and online retailers today. Uh, Breakfasttelevision.ca on how to do it and you can follow you on Twitter at Robin Doolittle. That's right. All right. Thank you very Thanks. much, Robin. And we'll